All right. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Bradley Butler. I am the executive director and curator at Main Street Arts in Clifton Springs, New York. And uh, tonight's event is an artist talk with Laura Caroline Casas, Michael Bridges, and Liz Cohen. Uh, this artist talk is part of a series of online events in conjunction with our exhibition, The Cup the Mug. Uh, these three artists are included in this year's exhibition, which is an online only invitational. Um, and this year's show includes 98 cups by 20 artists from 12 states. Um, and I'm just going to share uh, images of each of the artists' work while I say a few things about them here. Uh, so Laura Caroline Casas, a potter and illustrator from Columbia, North Carolina. Uh, Casas graduated from Western Carolina. <laughs> West, Western Carolina uh, University in 2018 with a BFA in studio art. Uh, Laura now resides in Raleigh, North Carolina, where she is the clay studio coordinator and potter, uh, pottery instructor at the Poland Arts Center. Uh, she operates her own studio practice, Casas Studios, in a rented space at the Carter Building uh, in downtown Raleigh. Uh, Michael Bridges was born in Alabama in the late 1980s. He grew up playing violin to his pet turtles after school and fishing with his brother on the weekends. Uh, he currently resides in Chicago, Illinois, where he works as a potter and teacher. And he's been featured in a variety of publications uh, from Garden and Gun to Ceramics Monthly. And uh, Liz Cohen is a ceramic artist based out of Denver, uh, Colorado. She received a BA in studio art from Georgia State University and has been working with clay since 2010. Uh, her work mainly consists of wheel thrown functional ceramic ware, but she also enjoys creating ceramic wall pieces combined with site specific murals uh, when time allows. Uh, Liz currently works out of a warehouse space close to her home. So uh, before we uh, get into the, the talk, um, I'd just like for each of the artists to maybe share a little bit more about themselves. Um, and uh, Laura, would you like to uh, to start us off? Sure. Um, yeah, so I have this rented studio space and I think I do my studio tour this Friday. Um, I've been here for, um, I've been in Raleigh and I've had this space for about two years. Um, I'm a hand builder, I like to pinch, pinch all my pots. Um, and yeah, I'm, how, how deep do you want me to go? Or is this just like the, the brief? Oh yeah, you can, I mean, part. we'll get into kind of a little bit of a discussion, but if there's anything about, you know, yourself as it relates to your ceramics or anything specific you'd like to say at this time, you can. Um, and if not, <clears throat> so that's good too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my, um, I originally went to school for like art ed, music ed, didn't really know exactly what, but um, when I took, you know, when I took a ceramics class, I was like, oh, this is it. This is what I want to do. Um, but, you know, my, my um, concept of art, fine art, going to art school was very kind of juvenile, really. I only thought of, um, when I thought of fine art and stuff like that, I only thought of painting and photography, that kind of thing. Um, so I never, pottery was really, really never on my radar. Um, but, you know, later I realized that I could combine, you know, my love for um, illustration um, <clears throat> and things like that with ceramics. Uh, so a lot of my work is inspired uh, or directly inspired by um, my heritage as a Mexican American. Um, individual uh, and you know the things that I grew up with here in the Americas like um, like animators like uh, blues and um, milk cons and um, things like that like uh, sword in the stone I I love that movie um, I, and particularly like um, <clears throat> there's this one's children there's this one children's book that I always think about and then later in life, like literally maybe a year ago, I just found out there was like a musical vinyl album <clears throat> written 
by an by a um musician uh takanaka i think that's who it is um it's called the rainbow um rainbow goblins and i feel like listening to that album i want my pieces to embody what that entails what that children's book entails it i don't know it the music, the 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 music that goes with that, the children's book concept of the Rainbow Goblins, um, I was like, wow, yeah, I can't believe how much that whole little series kind of subconsciously informed a lot of my work. And then, you know, again, a lot of the nostalgic cartoons and children's books and things like that also really informed. Um, in addition to, um, you know, when I was in college, going through like various different identity crises, crises. Um, Clay was a way for me to kind of explore my own history that, um, you know, I grew up in America, but I was born in Mexico. So, you know, I, um, I felt very disconnected from that part of me. And that history was sort of like, kind of uh, a little bit, lack of better words, like whitewashed almost. So, um, so finding Clay and then researching the history of Clay and finding out that the Clay itself is almost genetic to me um, was very um, was very enlightening uh, in my um, like research into my own identity. I guess either way, um, there's a lot of subtle notes and messages to that in my work um, in addition to the um the fun illustrations and things so yeah that was the spiel <laughs> all right awesome yeah no I, I think it's it's great when um whatever you do as an artist feels like it's the most natural thing that you can do right i mean that that's i think that's great um and also uh i've noticed talking to many ceramic artists, not only for this show, but just in general, it's like clay kind of sneaks up on you. It seems like all of a sudden you're like, Hey, I'm a, I'm a ceramic artist. Right. <laughs> uh, so that's, uh, I, I, I love that. I keep hearing that. So I think that's great. So, and I now I'm really curious to see uh, if the other two here tonight have had that same experience or a different one. So uh, thank you, Laura. Um, and uh, Michael, would you like to tell us a, a bit more about yourself? Uh, sure. So my, <clears throat> is it am I is, is my audio going through yep you're good okay, great um so I, I actually also didn't get into ceramics until much later on um I actually managed to get all the way through college without taking a single ceramics course and the very last uh class that I took at the art institute um I said you know what I've I've made it this far I might as well try and take one just just to have the experience take a ceramics class and I took a class with a um, guy named Israel Davis who's actually still making work um, I think he's in Michigan but we went out to Oxbow and the the very first ceramics class I took we screen printed images on clay and then wood fired them so it was like a really kind of intense um, intro into the into the field and I kind of didn't go back to it for a number of years, and I wound up getting into um, baking, and I worked as a professional bread baker for um, probably six or seven years, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, and some of the, the repetition that you have with baking and that kind of rhythm and ritual of getting up every morning, um, mixing, shaping, and kind of you do these sort of set a uh, uh, number of things um, that's kind of found its way into my ceramics practice and even when I was on my way out from baking and into ceramics uh, those two things kind of paralleled each other in a lot of the the rhythm of how how you work with ceramics and I think it's a very accurate description to say that a lot of people kind of it sort of sneaks up on you because you don't really realize that you're getting into that rhythm um, until maybe it's a little too late and then all of a sudden you're like oh my god I've got 600 cups and where did all these cups come from and how do I get rid of them <laughs> um but that's I guess that's uh that's just talking about what kind of what, what the um 
this the ceramics sneaking up on you can do. Uh, that's great. And uh, uh, Sam Chemley also talked about how he's really into baking. Uh, so, you know, there's something something there too. A lot of, a lot of commonalities here with, with ceramic artists. Um, great. And I mean, I think, you know, I think that there's a lot of, you, you put you put both in the oven. I mean, there's uh, yeah. one tastes better than the other, but, you know, one lasts yeah. long. That's so. debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, yeah, Sam's actually, uh, he's hit me up a couple of times for some some recipes which is or you know just sort of like how's this looking dude he, he looks like he's doing great he's killing yeah. it so. nice nice all right well great well thank you and uh liz uh, would you like to tell us a bit about a bit more about yourself sure um my name is liz cohen i uh i moved to denver in 2014 with my partner and um that was kind of one of the stepping stones into like what i'm doing now i guess but i I went to school in Georgia right when I was done with school I I moved out here but I yeah I studied studio art at Georgia State I'd always been artistically inclined as a kid um, and growing up so uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went to school I knew I wanted to be in the arts uh, in some capacity so once I took my first uh, clay class is kind of when it like hit me that like it checked all the boxes for me about the things I liked about art um you know like I was always drawing and painting growing up because we didn't have any ceramics programs at my uh schools growing up so um drawing and painting were a big thing for me and once I took a clay class I was like all right like this is this is what I this is what I needed like I was missing something in it so it clicked um so yeah I moved out here after graduating and I worked in um I worked in the restaurant industry but also I worked at a rec center and I was a studio tech for a uh, ceramics program there and uh also taught there eventually then I helped open up or like start a very small uh ceramics program at this adult center um adult and senior center so I helped them get a little ceramics program going there and then took a little detour to you know do some adulting I had to get a, a big girl job um to like buy a house and all of this stuff once I got the house that's when uh things with the business started growing and um yeah I just uh, I've, been, I've been making ever since I was in school most of the time I was just kind of playing around experimenting learning learning stuff and getting uh honing my skills and um figuring out what I liked and what I didn't like and uh what direction I wanted to go with my work so once I had a studio space at the house that we were able to buy that's when I I found I feel like I found my voice so the last few years uh we bought that house in 2018 so the last few years has just been kind of um growing that around the style that I like came upon so yeah in a nutshell that's all of it. All right. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, so all of you, um, you know, in your artist statements reference either um, memory or the past. And I thought that that was a really interesting overlap. You know, you all kind of reference that in, in some, some way. Um, so does anyone have anything to share to kind of start a conversation? Like, I know that, um, Laura, you kind of shared, um, uh, a lot about that when you you spoke already. Um, so does anyone you know have have anything to kind of to to say about what what draws them to like that in their work? <laughs> yeah, I can. It's 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 funny you bring that you know that particular concept up because uh, I just started reading um, Quest Love's book uh, Create. I think it's. Quest Creative. Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Creative Quest. Either way, he has a section in the book where he's talking about, you know, using the past as a reference for creative art making and like using that as a part of your process. And um, and yeah, that's totally right. Like I have all these sketchbooks that I'm referencing. Um, 
and like what's the point of keeping sketchbooks or keeping notes like that if you're not going to reference them like what's the point of doing all of this research if you're not going to eventually you know circle around and go back to it um, i'm finding myself doing that now in my current <clears throat> like body of work um when i was in college i was very direct with my um my connection to illustration so a lot of my works were very comic almost comic book like i had the frames the square frames you know like three square frames or four square frames like in all different sizes and that's something i like routinely do in my sketchbook too but like i would say right after college i stopped doing that and i made I made it more subtle, I suppose, um, breaking out of that frame. So I broke out of the frame, broke out of the structure of grids for a while. Um, but now I'm finding myself back in that um, in that um, in the notion of being very directly narrative, if that makes sense, like being very direct in my storytelling. I want to be direct now. Um, and so I'm referencing a lot of the notes I took like four years ago, four or five years ago and beyond like, okay, what was I thinking then that, you know, it, you know, that made the work look like that. Um, so yeah, the past and then like in general, you know, pulling from your own past experiences, um, researching your own past, um, it's it's a lot to it's a lot to discover there's a lot um yeah there's a, there's a lot going on um especially when um a particular past is almost purposely covered up it's like makes you want to it it makes you want to find more about it. it's like okay i have to know now now that this history has been erased like i have to know i want to know so things like that. Yeah, I mean, that's that almost like um, there's no there's no limit on where that can go then for you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, either either of uh, either Liz or, or Michael, any anything from your perspective to add to, to that idea? Um, I can go. I. Uh... I'm not, I don't get too deep with my work. I feel like I'm pretty, um, I, I kind of go more for just things that appeal to me visually. So I guess in the only way that mine uh, references the past is that I draw inspiration from retro and mid-century modern um, design elements. So, you know, the colors and patterns that I use are kind of taken from like a retro um, color palette or wallpaper pattern or just kind of what pops what I see when I see like mid-century modern architecture and I just kind of take that and like make something else out of it I don't it's not supposed to directly represent that but that's just kind of a starting like jumping off point for me um, and I just really like the way um, the colors and patterns um, play together uh, from those uh, time periods. So, yeah. And, and does that uh, transcend then into like the way that you like to like decorate your, your house too? I mean, is it all kind of a decked out mid-century house too? I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm in the lobby of where I'm, where I work right now. So I've tried to like bring in uh, like my work <laughs> also is a little bit like that, but um, yeah, the, the house is a work in progress. It's taken kind of a backseat uh, to everything else in my life right now, but that's the, that's the plan. Cool. Cool. And, uh, and Michael, um, in, in your statement, you kind of talk about a lot of things from childhood, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, memory, this, is, this was actually, I was having this conversation today with a, with a, actually a childhood friend and, um, uh, one, one of the things, so I, I've started this new series of work um, that's a little sort of figurative and uh, without giving too much away, um, one of the, the figures is um, 
like a like an action figure. They're kind of action figures. Um, they're scaled to be like action figures. Um, but this action figure is in a sort of uh, uh, like a reclined pose. Um, and it's really been stripped down to one element that uh, makes it recognizable as a certain character. Um, and the question was, well, why, why are you interested in this figure in this pose with this, uh, with this like one element that makes it recognizable? And for me, I think when you approach an image or you approach recreating an image, you have kind of two main avenues that you can uh, look at. One is you could uh, literally say this is a can and paint or draw or recreate that can in some fashion, or you could take your memory of that can and recreate it. And there's certainly merit to doing both. Um, but what's been something I've been discovering has been more and more interesting to me is how do I take my recollections of these specific things and translate them into um, something that looks like maybe it's a chicken, but it it kind of has a, a signifying characteristic that's a chicken, but like it's not really a chicken. It's a memory of a chicken or it's a um, kind of my idea that I've been fed of, of what a chicken is. Um, and I think that additionally, one, one other sort of layer to that is there's not only, there's memory in talking about things, there's memory in song, there's memory literally translated by touching things. Um, and that memory gets pushed from, you know, your hands into your work over and over and over, there's sort of a repetition to some of that memory. We're talking about baking again, but um, I, I don't know. That's kind of the, the I guess, approach or the, the significance that memory has to, to a lot of the work that I make. Okay, great. Um, well, that's, I mean, I think it's just really interesting to think about um, the way that something, you know, like that can, um, you know, have a different effect on on everyone's work. I mean, you know, memory, whether it's, you know, I, I make things with this mid-century modern a thing because of this specific moment I saw that or had a certain experience, you know, in a place that kind of looked like that or, you know, the other memories and experiences that you're remembering from past work or from childhood or whatever. So it's really interesting to see how everyone processes those, those different things. And uh, that kind of makes me curious about... Um, you know, memory is so personal. And so thinking about something that excites you personally in your work, and then the flip side of that being things that other people want to live with, right? I mean, is there ever a struggle for any of you figuring out well, what is it that I'm really excited to make? What are the kinds of forms I'm excited to make or surfaces that I, you know, I want to put this on the surface? Do you consider what the user thinks about that or wants from it? Or is it strictly, I make this, if they like it, then that's that. Uh, I can I can speak to that first if you want. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that's, that's a big struggle. And I know a lot of um, people debate about like whether you're making art for yourself or art for other people. Um, and are you being genuine when you're trying to make it to sell versus you're trying to get out an idea or a feeling or, or whatever? Um, I think you, um, I think you kind of have to do both if you want to make a living, uh, doing it or make money, some kind of money doing it. Um, but I think being genuine translates a lot to the user, the customer, and they can see that. If you're not being genuine, I feel like you're gonna have a lot harder time um, selling your own work because uh, you wanna be passionate about it, right? Um, but it also needs to be functional, like people need to be able to use it um, or want to display it, I guess, if you're making uh, strictly uh, like art objects. But I think, yeah, I think you do have to do a little bit of both and that's like, the sweet spot that I found when um, when I came upon my design, like I was sharing stuff that I made and like would occasionally get like good responses. But when I shared another, like this kind of more in line with the style that I'm working in now, 
I got such a great response from, from it. So that excited me that it excited other people. And it like the work itself excited me anyway, otherwise I wouldn't have made it, shared it. So I found that sweet spot there. Um, I know not everybody like finds it that way. Um, and some people, you know, make less practical, less functional pieces and sell those um, totally fine. So I don't know, I think it's to each individual and your market that you're trying to uh, break into. Yeah, and either of you, either um, uh, Laura or Michael have similar or different experiences uh, with that, kind of finding the sweet spot? Yeah, um, I can, I can, I can speak on that. Um, so I, I think of my, all of my, yeah, I think of my pots and like, I guess in two different ways, maybe. Um, when I'm, when I'm making and selling work, I have um, the illustrated pieces, and then I have the pattern pieces. Um, my pattern pieces are ones that they're motifs that are um, that are informed from the illustrated works, but they're able to re be repeated. Um, I think of it almost as like um, like a tattooer who has repeatable flash, but then like one-off flashes, you know, something like that. You know, um, I have mugs that are repeatable. You know, I I feel comfortable. You know, mass producing them. I get well, mass producing small batch mass produce as much as I can. Um, like I feel comfortable repeating that, um, like that design set. Um, whereas my more illustrated pieces, I feel very, not necessarily strict with those, but they're definitely one-offs. Like I don't, I won't ever make another one like that ever again. Like the next one might be informed by the last one, but it's not going to be the same. I'm always going to, I feel like with my illustrated pieces is when I give myself that chance to explore or um, to explore concepts and to, um, to, to, yeah, be, um, to be myself, like be more um, open, I guess. I don't know exactly what the word is but uh but yeah my illustrated pieces is where I find the most joy in making um and then also the pattern pieces are fun too but they're repeatable and so it's I feel like when I'm making those I'm I'm a machine because I've repeated those designs so many times I like got them locked down generally I think people like them <laughs> I'm, and so um so things like that and also I can sell those at kind of a more affordable rate, you know? And so I try to, um, and that's why I also have different avenues of trying to sell. So I have the illustrated mugs, which are kind of like up here and then the pattern mugs. And then, you know, down here, I like have prints that I sell that are inspired by the mugs and vice versa. So prints, um, the paintings and the illustrations that I do, inform um inform my mugs and my mugs sometime inform the illustrations that i do so they're all working together and then you have my sketchbook way over here that's like i'm also helping <laughs> so it also helps um so things like that um yeah i think it's for artists um to make money you i feel like you have to have your hands and all these different markets or like in the aspects of the market um that's how that's how it works for me or how i feel like it works for me <laughs> yeah i mean i think it's it's wild to think uh all, all of the uh, balancing that like um because like I'm, I'm a painter right so like i don't have the same kind of conversation in my head it's like you know it's a different thing people can't drink out of a painting you know so it's it's a really unique experience to have something that functions um, and someone could use it every day, but also something that is a piece of art that, you know, could also just be admired, whether from, you know, a distance or, you know, really close to my face. It's really an interesting thing. And then to add on that, you know, you have to also be some kind of business person as well. It's like a, a multi-layered thing. So, yeah. Uh, Michael, your, your thoughts on that? Oh, geez. I got a lot. I'm going to try, I'm going to try and 
condense it down. But, um, you know, I think for like, there's something really beautiful about a mug because it is a piece of art that you like hold and interact with like very intimately, right? Like you're putting this like literally to your face and that can be inviting or not, or like it can be a really, it, it, there are a lot of different experiences you can have with mugs um, or cups or functional wear just, just in general. Um, and I try to approach most of the work I, I make with a user-friendly kind of aspect, but I will say 90% of the time I get questions that are like, is this like actually functional? Like, can I drink from this? Um, and I have a lot of people who are sort of scared to um, like use the work because they're scared. I mean, there are like a lot of delicate elements to it. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm like, use it, break it, chip it, like, you know, get another one, we'll just, just keep them coming. Um, but in terms of generating those ideas, and this is, I'll, I'll keep this somewhat brief, but in terms of generating those, those ideas, I, I feel like there's a very delicate place early on when you have an idea that you can't really share it. It's like when you're writing a song, you write the lyrics or you write the music or you sort of, there's one little, there's a certain aspect that you have that idea that you need to put down um, just to sort of see the bones of it. And then you maybe work on it a little bit more. You come back to it, you put it through the kiln. It kind of goes through this process. Maybe it comes out of the kiln and you realize that it's a bad idea or it needs tweaking. And I'm really, really, really bad about like making 10 of something before I have any of them fired. So I wind up getting like, I realized there's a flaw in it. And then I have like 10, you know, I'm like, I can't use 10 of these pictures because like, there's a problem with, you know, something, but I, I'm just so excited about the idea. Um, and that can, that can certainly be a, a, a challenging aspect, or if there's something like, especially with social media, where you post a like in progress picture of something or, or like an idea that's not fully developed and then all of a sudden it's like open to like thousands of people who were giving their opinions on it. And that's a really challenging thing to navigate that in the sort of creative process of getting all this feedback much earlier on than you really need to, um, especially because you have to sell, like if at a point where you're trying to sell something, um, it can really throw you for a curve. It can be a, it can be a bad thing in a lot of ways. Um, I don't know. That's my that's my two cents on that. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, well, and I think that uh, um, well, I guess we kind of all talked about the or you know you just kind of said like the appreciating the cup as like this this um, this great form. It's something that you use, but also can appreciate. And I think it's great. Um, that's like why we love doing the cup show is because it's a great entry point for people. And I think I said this during uh, the talk um, last week was, you know, once you, once someone buys the, like their 10th cup, then it's like they're a cup person. They can, you know, they're, they're not afraid to drink out of it. It's going to be all right. If they break it, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, so it's, it's always good to cultivate uh, someone to becoming a cup collector. Cause it's like, it's a great entry into uh, art collecting in general, but specifically ceramics. Um, and you can never have too many cups. So um, that's that's the great thing. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, I'd like to uh, to thank all of you uh, for for doing this talk tonight. Uh, I think it's been been great, and I hope that everyone has enjoyed getting to know you each a little bit more. Um, and if you would like to uh, see the exhibition, the cup, the mug, uh, you can go to our website, and it is mainstreetartscs.org. Uh, you can see the show by going to the exhibition page, uh, and there you can learn about each of the artists. Uh, as I said before, there are 20 artists in total, uh, 98 cups altogether. And, uh, and once you get to the, each artist's individual page, you can click to view available works. Uh, you can also go to our shop page and, um, and just view just the cups, too. Uh, and uh, we will get to see uh, the inner workings of uh, studios uh, belonging to Liz and Laura on Friday. Uh, so please join us uh, 7.30 um, uh, on Friday, Eastern Standard Time, and, uh, and see the studio tour. So we look forward to that.
and the rest of the events as well. You can go to the events page on our site to see the upcoming events in addition to Friday's tour. Uh, so again, thank you all and uh, have a great night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.